Moncrief on News Talk. Sponsored by Avant Card. Choose personalised pricing. It's made for you. Now, the influence of books, such as Lord of the Rings, is almost impossible to calculate given their popularity. But for some people, the effect is obvious in how it has changed their lives. Kimberl Eventide lives in Illinois, but she lives her life as an elf. Kimberl, me gauva one melon. Yes, my Govan and Melanin. Okay, that was close How enough. How are you, Sean? Uh, uh, not too bad. Uh, uh, th- thanks very much uh, for, for taking our call today. Did you always know you were an elf or was there some point in your life where you thought, oh, that's who I actually am? Well, you know, the elves are, there's a variety of elven creatures um, within folk to- folklore and legends. And so the elf that I am is a humanoid type. Um, and I resonate with being an elf in, in soul. And um, whether it is a past life, whether it is part of my origins of where I came from before Earth, that is why I consider myself an elf. Mm. And I believe that the elven awakening is happening. Lots of people are resonating with elves and are basically feeling like they are elves, as well as in combination of being a human. And, and so to live like an elf, what's different between being, you know, living like an elf and living like a human? Well, the great thing about it is that it's not so very different. Um, the one thing that makes you different is, I would say, that the priority. Um, you are far more connected to nature. You try to spend your time mostly in nature if you can. Um, you just have a different mindset than what other humans might have um, as far as being so close to the elements and to nature. And Tolkien was really brilliant in showing uh, this, this advanced consciousness within his elven characters. And so when you embrace that elven nature within, it does give you a sense of being connected to something higher, something you know, more divine outside of the ego self. Mm. And But elves, elves do live someplace. Where do they live? <laughs> that is the question. They can be all over. I mean, there is many, um, there's many legends and there's many, many uh, different stories and even some evidence and proof that elves still do remain Um, Within Ireland, Scotland, uh, there are people that still claim to see them. And um, I do believe that we have elven type of beings that actually live in the inner earth. And I also believe that elves are also in other dimensions as well as on other planets where there would be elven fairy-like beings. Uh, What's the inner earth? The inner earth is... Uh, basically, the idea that we have uh, different types of species and beings that are living underneath us, under under the crust of the earth, and uh, the earth is, is hollow, but not completely all hollow, but there is a part of it that is hollow, like caves, if you go on cave tours. So there's a lot of evidence that there has been um, really elaborate and intricate cave dwellings below us. Wow. And so there's a lot of new evidence, and I can spend a lot of time telling you all about uh, the inner earth beings. But Corey Good on the Gaia channel has been one that has really brought that to surface a lot. Mm. Um, and, and so the legend of the she in Ireland is that the, when, when the, uh, the Tua de Don and when they came and they were banished or at least they left and they went down below into the inner earth because right. they knew that they couldn't live with the humans on the surface. Okay. And at so least, but are they living yeah. in the dark down there? Um, well, according to Corey Good and within my own intuitive hunch, um, they are able to produce their own light and energy. Also, you have to think about the way that mountains are constructed and caves are constructed. There is natural light that can poke through. 
Um, we just cannot see it, but from an aerial view, we could probably see it. Um, so that is how they get their natural light. Um, there is a lot of really interesting information of how they actually can create their own light and, um, and use light energy and sound energy uh, to have an advanced civilization down below. Mm. And, and do, do you receive messages or have form, some form of communication with those elves or elves that are in other places? So I think that one of the qualities to being a, a starseed, somebody that feels that their past life was from another planet before coming to Earth, and that you belong to a, a group of species that was not quite the Earth humans that we have here. I believe that what happens with starseeds is that they have, they have locked memories stored within memory banks within. And so the messages that I receive and the downloads are really just me awakening to past memories. And time is kind of happening simultaneously all at once. We have the past, the future, and the present all moving together as one at the core of uh, the universe in the sense that we, you know, time does not really exist, but it's a construct, a measurement that humans created in order to understand, you know, moment to moment. But we are learning that time is an illusion in, in, in the idea that we have the past and the present and the future happening all at once. And it's the perceptive and, or the perspective that we take that allows us to look at each moment. And so I believe that when starseeds are, are getting downloaded information, it's really just locked memories within that are reaw- they're reawakening to. Right. Okay. So you're not getting messages from them saying it's Tuesday. Hello. Uh, it. It. The, the, these are things that, that could be hundreds of years old, thousands of years old. Yes. Um, now there is an idea, and Corey Good on the Gaia Channel talked about this, and I do believe that this is this is definitely um, very possible. Um, in Atlantis and Lemuria, they use this technology where they kind of sit in giant crystals. I mean, there's crystals in the inner earth. I mean, that's where we get crystals. So um, there's an idea that they use it to amplify their thoughts and to telepathically connect to their, you know, fellow uh, beings, um, to other humans. Basically, the whole story is, Sean, is that we have the humans who are part of a greater family within the universe. And there are beings that are acting as our older brothers and sisters, trying to guide us. We, in essence, we're all from one prime source. But there's a story playing out, and there's a physical reality that has to exist in the idea that we have to have aliens or some outside influence that assists us in a transformation. And that is so that we can enjoy this story that is unfolding in the physical reality. And do you but really think- what's happening... In- yeah, do oh, you, I'm sorry. Do you, do you, um, sorry, Kimmer. Do you think we are transforming? Okay. Because many people would look at the world around them and say, God, it's in a terrible state. Oh, yes. I mean, we all have choices to make. Um, absolutely. Some are, are moving on to higher consciousness uh, dimensions within their own mind and their perceptions of reality. Some are regressing and are, are um as they say, kind of trapped within the material world of physical matrix of things that are going on outside. Carl Jung was very brilliant in saying that those who look inside awaken. Those who look outside all the time, they are still asleep. So there's this balance that needs to happen. You need to be able to look at the world, but also you need to look and seek within yourself. And that aids in a spiritual transformation. And the Palladians are all about, in their messages uh, with Billy Meyer in the Swiss Alps in 1975, this is where the Palladian beings came from, um, the Plagiarians. They told him that they are interested in assisting humanity because it's happening in a spiritual evolution, a, a consciousness shift in which we become spiritual beings rather than our material, you know, mm. human physical self. So you don't have to look like an elf or anything like that to become elf-like. 
Do, do, in your in the, in the normal course of your day, though, Kimberell, do you do you dress as like an elf? I do. Um, I do. I really enjoy expressing myself. Uh, Peter Jackson was great with his with his vision because I think it aligns very well to the way that the elven beings would look. Um, so that's very inspiring. You know, there's cosplay and there's all of that. And I believe that, yes, it helps to express yourself in that way. Look mm. like nature. You know, look like you can hide behind a tree and no one would, see, you know, be yes. able to find you. And you have, um, an el- you have an elf boutique, as I understand it. I, I do. I do. I, I gather stuff together and I create my own jewelry. I am very interested in right now. And I have gotten a lot of inspiration, otherworldly inspiration, as well as inside of me inspiration to help people and to facilitate becoming more elven-like, because that symbolizes the higher consciousness transformation that many humans are looking for. Um, the The Shannara Chronicles were not that off in the idea that humans could possibly evolve into those elven-like beings. Um, so Tolkien was a visionary, and even though he wrote that the elves were the old, you know, the older beings, and they were leaving Middle Earth, I believe that the elves are actually reawakening and are coming back. Okay. And that is why we are seeing so many people get surgery and their ears tipped. I mean, it is an elven awakening. People really want to look like elves and fairies. Yeah. And it, I think it's a really beautiful thing, and I'm really happy to facilitate that. Do you think Donald Trump is elven-like? Do you see any elven-like qualities to uh, your president? Absolutely not. Um, he is not into um, the environment. Um, he is not living in the higher uh, chakras or the consciousness places. Um He's a fine man, and I know that he has a good heart, um, but I do not think that that part of him has awakened yet, especially with his way that he limits the um, the environmental um, investigation on global warming and some of the things that are going on. Next week, I am going to have a environmentalist with who's getting his Ph.D. to tell us a little bit more about how they are right now in their classes really observing that, yes, there is a global warming happening. And this is something that is constantly pushed down by Trump and the administrators and people behind him as well. Um, Because, you know, there's a fear there. And so people don't want to look at that. But I think that that's the wrong way to handle it. And I don't think that's being wise. I think that if you are in elven consciousness, you're going to always look at the issues at hand And you're going to see what are the solutions? How can we combine our minds together and come out with a, you know, a productive uh, solution to this issue that we have? And I I don't think that that's quite where he is. Well, maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll get the message uh, at some point. Maybe. uh, Kimberell, thank you so much for uh, speaking with us uh, today. That's uh, Kimberell Eventide. We have. 